Dr. Rovellini, I am a postdoc at the University of Washington, and in this talk I will give you an overview of an approach that myself and uh, Owen Liu have developed to translate uh, um, ROM's NetCDF output to Atlantis forcing files. So the purpose of this approach is to create the salt, temp, and hydro.nc files for Atlantis from uh, uh, ROM's NetCDF output. And we know that that can be a time consuming step of the model development. And uh, we also know that there are a lot of tools that uh, people have developed over time to do just that uh, in a number of different programming languages, including R and MATLAB. Um, we also know that just because of the differences between Atlantis models and the differences between uh, uh, oceanographic models, it's not easy to come up with uh, one universal, uh, one size fits all to, uh, to do the translation job. And uh, we are not uh, attempting to do that. And we're also not attempting uh, to propose a tool that is better than anything that already exists. Uh, we are more interested in uh, uh, basically starting a conversation between working groups that um, that um, do this sort of work um, to you know discuss the steps that the process takes and uh, what the pitfalls can be and uh, you know what the what the best way to uh, to tackle each step could be and uh, we also want to remind everyone that. Uh, we are building on uh, uh, the work of others, uh, as always, and in particular, we are building on a lot of our code that has been developed by uh, Mark Sumner and Shane Richards and Javier uh, that is helping us with the translation. So um, the problem of uh, translating ROMs data to Atlantis forcing files is basically a downscaling problem. So you have the high resolution grid of uh, the ROMs model, uh, which can be of varying resolution depending on the model. Uh, and then you have the Atlantis geometry, which is a much coarser spatial resolution. Um, so you want to downscale the output of the first to fit into the second, and uh, we will be talking about three grids uh, for our purposes here. Uh, one is the row grid, which is the grid in ROMs where the state variables are defined, uh, for example, temperature and salinity and vertical velocity, uh, and it's denoted by the dots uh, in this graph in the bottom left corner of the slide. Um, and then there are two velocity grids that are denoted by the arrows in this graph. And uh, one is uh, the V grid for the northward velocity, and one is the U grid for the eastward velocity. And we use these two combined uh, to calculate water transport across phases in Atlantis. Um, so for the state variables, row grid, um, it can be as simple as doing uh, a spatial join of the ROMs points with uh, your Atlantis boxes in your geometry. Um, whereas for the velocities, uh, obviously we're interested not so much in the box, but more in fluxes across faces. Um, and so the approach that we used here was drawing a buffer around uh, each face. And so the, the figure on the right, you can see the, the faces, the thick black line, the red dots are the V points in this case here. Uh, and then the thin black line around the face is a 10 kilometer buffer. And the size of the buffer should be uh, meaningful with respect to the size of the, with the distance of the, of the points in the ROMs grid, obviously. Um, so that was for the horizontal dimension. Obviously, also for the vertical dimension, we need to keep in mind that uh, ROMs uh, follows a, a terrain following uh, vertical coordinates. So you have the same amount of vertical layers in a ROMs model that get stretched and squeezed depending on the bottom depth, but you have always the same amount of layers. So we need to find a way to map um, those vertical layers from ROMs to the vertical layers that we have in an Atlantis model. Um, and uh, the way that we set that up uh, is by using uh, vertical interpolation. So basically at each single grid point of ROMs, 
we do a vertical interpolation at one meter intervals down the water column and uh, basically that gives us uh, vertical profiles at each point for each variable and then we can take these vertical profiles and we can uh, uh, map those back onto the, um, the Atlantis vertical layers and so at that point we're left with uh, points per cell so points per depth layer per box um, and uh, once we have that for the state variables uh, it's easy enough you can uh, even just take an average uh, for each layer so for each depth layer of, uh, of each box um, for the velocities um, it requires a couple of extra steps so we are still left with uh, an amount of points per vertical layer per face this time so in the buffer around each face and uh, we take averages of the vertic of the northward and eastward velocities uh, for each cell and then uh, um, at that point you want to take uh, to calculate the product of those two velocities uh, to get kind of you know the, the net velocity at that phase at that location um, and uh, once you've done that you also want to uh, further decompose that velocity into the orthogonal component to the face uh, right so the water that moves uh, orthogonally across each face um, and at that point you can uh, multiply that velocity by the area of the face at that at that depth layers and you're left with um, uh, a water transport basically in cubic meters per second so this slide here i will not go into details but i'll leave it here um, if people are interested in seeing the details of or some details of the approach uh, but it's essentially four R scripts that take you from ROM's output to Atlantis input uh, without needing any further piece of software uh, the real workhorse would be column one so uh, the script that is labeled as part one everything else is um, housekeeping and, and, and packing to, to NetCDF files for, for Atlantis um, we applied this method uh, to the um, uh, Northeast Pacific 10 kilometer resolution ROMs uh, to get forcing files for the Gulf of Alaska Atlantis model, model that we're developing. Um, if you're interested in that, I invite you to check out my uh, talk about the Gulf of Alaska model. Um, and uh, we have one year's worth of forcing files at the moment and we're trying to produce the rest of the handcast. Um, it is very important to conduct some uh, thorough validation of uh, I think any approach any translation from from ROMs to Atlantis models and uh, uh, one very important tool that you know we're using a lot is the shiny our atlantis uh, package developed by shane richards and and and, and javier um, and that allows you to check things like stratification of of salinity and temperature uh, make sure that everything looks the way it should look like with warmer water in the summer cooler water in the winter um, same for the fluxes you can you know you get to see if you have if you know that you have consistent upwelling or downwelling in some areas uh, there, there are functions in there to kind of visualize all of this and make sure that the products that you get out of the translation job uh, make sense with the with the oceanography of the area um, a couple of words about uh, some drawbacks and you know maybe some points for discussion as well um, we are taking the vertical fluxes from a vertical velocity in the ROMs or that's what I've been doing so far um, however sometimes this variable in ROMs is used as a little bit of a balancing variable itself for the horizontal fluxes so it's not always 100% reliable when it comes to um, you know indicating actual vertical water movement um, that might be slightly alleviated in our system but there's that um, another option that that other people are using is you can calculate the vertical fluxes as the residual of the horizontal fluxes that converge in a cell 
Um, but either way you do it, you'll be left with, most likely you'll be left with a flux imbalance at the bottom of, uh, of, of an Atlantis box, right? And so the way we fix that is by um, adjusting, so se sending the residual to uh, layer zero of, of box zero, uh, basically. But that's a hack that, um, you know, it, it works, but uh, it, we, we need to keep that in mind. Um, another thing is that we, we, as an approximation, we consider the velocity variables as being on the same uh, grid, uh, same location as the state variables. But as I was showing before, that is not the case. And uh, many times that is, you know, that can be inconsequential. But if you have a steep depth gradient, uh, that could be a, that could be an issue because you're basically placing velocity vectors uh, at a location where they might be different also depending on the resolution of the ROMs. Um, we are correcting for hyperdiffusion, uh, dividing by the area of the destination box, uh, but we are thinking of alternatives. Um, and uh, it's not a fast piece of code. The, the, the big bottleneck is the vertical interpolation, obviously, because it needs to be done at each ROMs point for each variables. So there is there is a lot of computation that goes into it. Um, and if you take 250 gigs of ROMs data, uh, you can get the whole thing done um, in five days or so, depending on your system, on one single core. So you can break that down, uh, of course, uh, with 250 gigs being uh, uh, a year's worth of, of ROMs data in my case. Um, but things may be different for, for your for your data. Um, so as a bit of a summary, uh, we uh, developed this code uh, to translate from ROMs NetCDF to Atlantis forcing files. It's not a plug and play code, so it's, you know, we would love to hear from you if you want to apply this to your model. Uh, but, you know, we, we might need to work on, on, on it a little bit uh, together to um, adapt kind of the way that the data gets read into, into the code and how it gets spat out. Um, I would love to hear from people, um, you know, other people that have been working on this, how you guys handle the vertical velocities. Do you take them from the model? Do you calculate them yourself? Um, how do you uh, think of the fluxes across the faces? Uh, and then we would love to hear how you guys do um, any sort of validation work for the uh, forcing files that you get out of this, this kind of, this kind of uh, work. Um, and what you think matters the most when it comes to uh, forcing files, uh, specifically the, the water transport. I, I seem to have noticed that uh, the magnitude of the flux and the sign seems to be the most important thing in you know how water circulates uh, the model, but other people might have uh, different, different experiences. Um, but in general, uh, we really invite people that are interested um, to compare notes, to contact us, uh, me or Owen. Um, you can check out our code at, at, at this link uh, if you wish, and just just flip me an email. I can I can share it with you. Thank you.